This month's Where Did the Road Go is sponsored by Allison Cook, Tim, Lindsay Trebet, and Super Inframan. Thank you so, so very much. And now our show. Transmission start. Welcome to Where Did the Road Go? Join us as we wander off the path and explore lost history, consciousness, the paranormal, unexplained mysteries, alternative thought, and much more. We are present on the web at wheredidtheroadgo.com. Now here is your host, Soraya. Welcome to this edition of Where Did the Road Go? And tonight I am joined by Alex Whitcomb. And uh, you you have told me you've had quite a lot of weird experiences throughout your life. Uh, kind of a lifetime, almost a lifetime of weird experiences, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so what was some of the earliest stuff that ever happened to you? Uh, well, the early major, well, I mean, I've always, you know, since, uh, since a kid, I've seen odd lights in the sky, um, strange dreams, uh, I guess you would call precognitive dreams where I'm dreaming of something. And then, you know, months or years later, I see the place, even though I've never been there. Um, you know, my mom saw a UFO, uh, like right by our hover, right by our house when I was like three. So there's like been this thread of, of, uh, of, uh, the others, the strangeness, uh, especially, uh, UFOs, uh, going on throughout my life. Hmm. Um, yeah, but, uh, I never really, I never really saw anything. I never really had any interactions, uh, um, until I started, uh, 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 experimenting with out of body travel, uh, oh. 2000, 2001. Yeah. And that was a surprise to me, right? Like, um, yeah. Cause was, you, uh, you don't normally think there's going to be a connection there. No, not at all. Not at all. Well, I mean, I didn't, back then I didn't know much about anything. I didn't even, I didn't even know about it out of bodies. Uh, I really, um, what was it? Uh, I was living with my, then girlfriend at the time we had just moved into our our first place together and we were avid mushroom hunters and, and nature lovers we'd always be walking in the woods and and we loved like looking for mushrooms and and one day we found this little patch of um, uh, native psilocybin and psilocybes uh, they were really small they're called the liberty caps they're like just a just a tiny wee little magic mushroom mm -hmm. and we had we had never really done it before you know maybe a couple times partying like way back in the day as teenagers but haven't done it hadn't done anything like that together so we're like, oh, excited okay yeah all right let's uh, let's pick them and dry them and make some tea and have them tonight and so we did that and yeah we're sort of kind of sitting there the whole night and no effects nothing <laughs> it's just <laughs> okay well all right i guess uh you know Claire, Claire went and uh, read on the couch, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll just go to bed, and I'll just lay on bed and, and read myself. And wh when I laid down, even though I hadn't really, like, um, experienced any effects from the mushrooms, I'm kind of, I, I, I'm, I'm saying it was the mushrooms that kind of opened this doorway. Sure. Uh, yeah, and when I laid down... Um, uh, I don't know. It was like probably three, three and a half hours after we had the tea and uh, should have been all the way through, but I started feeling these vibrations, um, kind of roar through my body. And it, I, I think they would start like lower in my body and just like zoom upward. It was very weird. It was like, zoom, zoom. And, and they would like go through to the top of my head. It was like a cloud of bees or something just like, like going through my body. So I thought, I thought that was the mushroom. I kind of like, okay, well that's just a, a little after effect from mush mushrooms maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, then I, I kept on feeling this um, night after night, whenever I laid down and started to relax, I would get these vibrations course through my body. And I thought it was interesting. It didn't feel unpleasant at all. It's kind of like a mild electric um, shock, I guess, but but not not unpleasant. Right. A and 
Yeah, so I think it was, I can't remember how long it was after that, but uh, my dad's girlfriend uh, lent me a big, like, encyclopedia of the paranormal. And so I was kind of, like, voraciously eating that up, all these cool things that I've never even, you know, heard about before. And uh, one one day I, I flipped open to the out-of-bodies, uh, out-of-body things. I was like, oh, that's cool. And uh, reading, and then it mentioned something about uh, vibrations that are often uh, felt prior to an out-of-body experience. So I'm like, ooh, is that what that maybe, maybe this is? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm curious. I'm totally curious. I'll, I'll go with this and see if it is uh, out-of-body, um, like a doorway to out-of-bodies. And, uh, yeah, so every time I... Every time after that, when I would lay down and feel the vibrations, I would just say I would put some intent out there. Um, I would go out of body, out of body, you know, in my head, out of body, go out of body. And didn't really do anything. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I have to like hold these vibrations in order to, because they're just passing through me. Maybe I got just got to hold them. And then, and then I can go out of body. So I visualize myself. And it's funny because I'm not really a sports guy at all, but I visualize myself catching these vibrations like a baseball and then holding them in my body. And like that night, it totally worked. Boom. And like the vibrations are like stuck inside of me. I was like, (laughs) and, um, and I found out, I was like, I couldn't move, couldn't speak, couldn't do anything. And I started freaking out. Uh, and I tried like, uh, I tried yelling to, to, to my girlfriend, uh, Claire, and I couldn't even like utter a noise and that passed. And then the next night I'm like, okay, well, screw it. I'm, I'm just going to do this again. Cause I'm, I'm just totally curious about this. And I really, really want to do out of bodies cause I've had flying dreams before. And that's just like to do that, like with uh, lucid awareness. Oh, that would be like the coolest thing. Right. Right. So, uh, yeah. Um, I caught them again. And then when I caught them, I, I, I slowed my fear down. I was like, okay, calm down, calm down. Out of body, out of body, out of body. And did that for two nights. And the second night I just like, it was weird. It, It was like, I just popped out of my bed, like straight up. Um, like as I, it was like I pivoted on my ankles, um, and I was out of my body, right? Um, and it was so like surprising. I was like, "Holy crap, I did it!" And as soon as I had the "Holy crap" moment, I went back. You know, I woke up in, in bed. And my eyes woke uh, open. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the next night I was like, okay, all right, this is, this is cool. I can do this. Let's, let's keep going with it. Um, yeah, the next night I, I was successful. Uh, I was so excited. I just like started flying around, uh, my house downstairs playing with my dog. Uh, it's just rad. So, uh, yeah, I, that was, uh, I think that was 2002 that I started doing that. And pretty much did it, did it, I would say nightly. I'm sure there was like a lot of nights that I didn't do it. Uh, But that was, that was kind of my hobby Um, from 2002 to 2005 was uh, exploring um, out of body, uh, out of body travel. Hmm. Uh, It it was like, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's incredible. (laughs) You can just do what you want. You fly, you can. You can just zoom up right into the air. Yeah, it's uh, and it's really neat bringing bringing your awareness to it, like like lucid awareness. Um, yeah, it's super fun. So the the way you just described the vibrations initially actually sounds a lot like what awakened Kundalini feels like. Ah, okay, yeah. Right down to the yeah, electrical I, I, aspect of that. I've heard you mention that, yeah, many times on the on the podcast before, yeah. So, so, so m- maybe the mushrooms woke up your kundalini a little bit and allowed you to then focus on, you know, using it for out of body. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, if it if it was a kundalini awakening, uh, 
I sure had a, a pretty gentle one. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hear it can be like absolutely brutal sometimes. Yeah. Right. But yeah. most most people who do it intentionally and go to like Kundalini yoga and stuff, they're not. That's you know, it's not a bad awakening. Right. So maybe right. because maybe because the mushrooms woke yours up instead of like say a trauma. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and we weren't. Uh, you know, we weren't. We didn't have that intent. When we were when we were ingesting the mushrooms, we didn't have that intent to like, oh, let's have a party night, right? Yeah. Um, we were very respectful um, and, and treating the mush- mushrooms like like you know a living being with respect mm. and entity and 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 um, yeah. So we had that kind of intent. So maybe it uh, maybe it responded in kind. It could be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ha- have you had that sort of electrical feeling since then? Uh, since, since when? Since like since since two- that first time that you felt it. Like, is it always feel? Do you always get like the electrical vibration yeah. feeling? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. It always it it always starts like that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And uh, and I was like sometimes sometimes I would get it. Uh, like I would wake up at night you know, three in the morning or something and wake up to the vibrations. And I just like wake up from sleep and I'd be immediately excited. I was like, Oh, all right, okay. Yeah. Our body time. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. That, and, uh, and, and that definitely sounds like Kundalini. Cause that happens to me regularly. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you, you, out of body travel then? Or? I don't, I don't really out of body travel that I'm aware of, but I have very, you know, okay. Very intense dreams when that happens. So I'll get prophetic right. dreams, or I'll get um, like uh, a sleep paralysis type of stuff. That I'm not even sure yeah. if sleep paralysis is the right word for what I'm experiencing. It almost yeah. seems like I'm interacting with something, but I don't know if I'm in or out of body. I have no idea. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, definitely. That's uh, you know, if if I was to go to a doctor about this and and say, hey, hey, here's my symptoms. They, oh yeah, that's just sleep paralysis you know right uh, right a condition a condition that affects you know 13 percent of the population or whatever but <laughs> i i i am reluctant to call it sleep paralysis um anymore it just uh to me it's a doorway it's just a it's yeah. an open door and you just open that up and and uh astral wor- world is your oyster right <laughs> have you done anything that you could in any way verify? Oh, uh, well, no, I okay. don't think so. No, I, I wasn't really that inclined to do that. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. Like when I, when I went traveling, it was just, it was pure joy, right? Like that was, I guess why I did it so much is because it was, such a such an awesome escape from like the nine to five grind mm-hmm. and uh and the daily you know uh dramas and and whatnot and i would never i would never bring those with me like i you know it's like i didn't have a job or i didn't have you know i wasn't angry at that person today or like i've just like come into these experiences and and travel with pure joy and uh yeah yeah, it was it was so awesome. I miss it <laughs> dearly. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't happen anymore. No, no. Uh, yeah, two thousand five changed all that. So yeah. okay, what what happened um, in two thousand five? Well, okay. So I had been practicing uh, travel for what? I guess that would have been uh, probably about three years, two thousand two to two thousand five. Yeah, so three years ish, and. I was getting to the point where I was starting to um, create environments to mm-hmm. to practice in, and one of the one one of the environments that I I loved um, creating was uh, these these massive massive buildings like towers, but they were hollow inside, and and you know I, I don't know think about like two hundred stories tall. Um, but completely empty, um, except for like, they're all black inside, except, except for this glowing green grid, kind of like uh, Star Trek holodeck or something. And so I would use these environments to, to practice flying because 
for me, I don't know what it is for other people, but for me, there was a lot of uh, intricacies and subtleties with uh, with movement uh, in terms of uh, getting around and, and doing the whole flying thing. Um, so I would create these environments and 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 practice. Okay, what does it feel like when I you know intend this way or uh, you know, how do I swoop to the left? How do I swoop to the right? Can I do it a better way? Um, uh, can I make things clear in my vision, um, in in out of body state? All these all these little subtleties that uh, that I love to play with. And uh, it was in one of these environments, these these big buildings that I created, that uh, I was flying down. I totally remember this. I was flying down and just enjoying the enjoying it so much and then i noticed something like on the on the opposite wall and it was like something was looking at me you know when you get that feeling you know you're in a crowded room and someone's looking at you and you get mm -hmm. that feeling and yeah it was like that and i couldn't see anything all i could see was the black wall with the green grid and i was like oh man there's something there there's someone looking at me what what is this and so I swooped down. I was like, I got to see. I got to see who's here. So I swooped down. And, you know, before I get to the wall, uh, I just opened my eyes like that in bed. I was like, what the? Like, that's weird. That never really happens. Because mm -hmm. I'm always, I'm always kind of like, like when I want to come back into my body, I, I can do that. Right. But this just. Yeah. It was weird because it just like shot me right back in my, in, you know, back into uh, in bed with my eyes open. So that was strange. A um, little, little bit different than, well, yeah, different than uh, than my other uh, intended experiences. Right. And then, and then the next night, um, I feel the vibrations again. And I hear the doorbell ringing. And in this one, I was like, oh, okay, the doorbell's ringing. So I get out of body, I fly to the door. and But it's more like a dream, a regular dream awareness, where I'm just kind of playing the part of a character like like in a movie right i didn't i didn't I didn't have the normal lucidity that I have um, um in in my out of body travel so i i fly up to the door i open the door and there's this uh four foot tall gray alien standing a couple steps down and i was like oh hey there you know just matter of fact like, oh, oh hey you know <laughs> he's, and he starts speaking well he doesn't use his mouth he's he's like doing the whole telepathic thing He's like, oh, hey, how's it going? Oh, sorry to bother you. Uh, oh, I was just wondering if uh, you could help me. Um, you know, my craft is broken on the roof. I, I need some help. Um, you know, can I come in? And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. Come on in. And, and I do notice that there's this craft, like a typical disc-shaped craft, like on the top of the roof. I can feel it. I can't see it. But I can, I can definitely feel that it's up there. And, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, come on in. Right. And, uh, just like that out and wake up the next day and think, Oh yeah, that was a weird dream. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, looking back, there's this whole invitation thing. Like, like I, I allowed these beings to, to come into my life. Um, right. I, I said, yes, which, okay. Yeah. I'll own that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, so this started, uh, two weeks of approximately two weeks of interactions with these, with these beings, um, visiting, uh, my bed at night and doing stuff to me. Um, there were there are very notable uh, memories um, that I had written down, and I think it, for maybe three or four days out of those two weeks, uh, they didn't do anything um, because 
I, I knew that because I every morning after these experiences, I would have a body reaction, right? Because um, the, I guess the trauma, the terror was like very, very intense. And when it came flooding back to the, me in the morning, even if I didn't remember it, outright i would i would crumple to the floor and and start crying and shaking um so yeah the first experience i had the, the first night um i found myself awake in uh in um i guess it was two or three in the morning and the vibrations were there and i was excited you know the previous night was just a dream about an alien right. with a space, space spacecraft. I just wrote it off as a dream. Sure. And I, I was excited. I got the vibrations. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, time to go. All right, let's go out of body. Coffee time. And didn't work. I'm like, come on. I'm like, out of body. And I was stuck for some reason. I couldn't get out of my body. I was like, what the hell's going on? And then I noticed that there was something beside my bed staring at me. And I was on my left side because I, I was sleeping towards my partner. I was on my left side and like paralyzed. I couldn't move. I had the vibrations going and I'm feeling this stare from the side of my bed. And I'm like, what is that? What the hell is that? There's something by the bed. I got to know what this is. Oh, and it just, it was there. It was just kept on staring at me and I could totally feel it. And so with all of my intent, all of my focus, I, I, I just mustered all of my focus. I'm like, break it, break it, break the paralysis, break the paralysis, break the paralysis. And I crescendoed. And then I turned like, as soon, as soon as it broke, I turned towards whatever was there it was dark and my when i turned my left arm flung over to the side of the bed and landed on this very tiny wrist that was i don't know like maybe two feet off the floor and it landed on this wrist and i could feel this little the owner of this little wrist like hurriedly like scamper away like away from the bed and then i just like blacked out like that and uh the next day I woke up and didn't really realize it. I didn't really remember at first. And I'm just make, like making breakfast and then it comes back to me. And that's, that was like the first time that I like, like it overwhelmed me with like this fear and emotion. And yeah, I, I crumpled to the floor and started crying. And my wife's like, Oh, Whoa, Whoa. <laughs> what's, what's the matter? I'm like, oh, so I told her all about it, and, and uh, then went about my day, and it just it kept on going after that. So, yeah, the next night, two of them arrived. Um, they, I was again in the vibratory state, paralyzed, couldn't speak, couldn't move. Um, felt myself like I was laying on my back at that that night, and the, felt them lift me up um over on my side so they could do something with my back i have no idea what they were doing with my back i couldn't really feel it but i just knew they were doing something back there or interested or checking me out or something hmm. um yeah and uh it progressed to more um detailed experiences like these were very quick and brief uh, encounters by the bedside, right? Yeah. Uh, um, but the next one was uh, was very detailed. Um, it was a different uh, different being, uh, and this was more of a dream. It was more. It was presented as more of a dream to me. Uh, but in hindsight, I, I knew it wasn't a dream. Uh, but it was presented as a dream. So there I am, you know, just going about my motions, dream awareness, um, no lucidity, just following uh, what this being wanted me to do. So I found, uh, initially I found myself in this um, uh, 
large room with a with a circular um, set of like brown leather chairs all put together. And I was just sitting on one of these chairs at the end, hands on my lap, uh, staring straight ahead. And I noticed this other um, other person, uh, like a younger Asian male, uh, doing the same thing on the opposite side of, of the chairs. And so while I was looking, I was kind of glancing at him. And then I feel this hand on my shoulder and this nurse comes into view, this like incredibly tall, six foot plus um, nurse. Uh, looks humanish, uh, mm. but the features are very long limbs, uh, very long, delicate fingers, um, delicate features, um, uh, very large head, large eyes, pointed chin, etc. Except she's she's dressed in this kind of um, it's almost like a Looney Tunes esque like nurse uniform from like the the, the old Looney Tunes car- cartoons. Yeah, yeah. And so she she lays her hand on my shoulder and leans around. She's like, "Oh, it's time for your haircut now." I'm like, "Oh, sure, haircut. Yeah, I'm in dream awareness, so I'm just like going with it." <laughs> and she leads me over to this double set of. Uh, glass doors and and I go through and um, the the imagery in that next room uh, stuck with me that night so I, I noticed to the left there was this uh, curved like uh, almost a reception desk uh, faced with like stone uh, with a huge wooden slab for uh, for the top and a, and a stone pillar behind it um, the there was a big picture window right in front of me uh, that uh, that showed the the where we lived. It was the Comox Glacier, so I could see the Comox Glacier. It's a very iconic uh, uh, feature of the landscape where we lived at the time. And and then there was two rooms over to the right. And so she proceeds to lead me into the second room and lays me down on what appears to be like a massage table um you know elevated from the floor i'm laying on my stomach uh, my face is in one of those you know padded rings so i could see through and breathe and she i'm like okay yeah haircut time so she she takes out this device and uh how i can describe it it's got like two like black handles on the end and then it goes in with a couple of like steel pipes to this like circular metal disc and then like a almost a, like a su- suction cup under the disc and while i'm laying there she like clamps this onto the back of my neck and and it like suction cups i was like oh this is a strange haircut and as soon as i had that like oh this is a weird haircut it's i started to like i guess i started to be aware that something funny was going on here. And, and I don't remember the rest. I, you know, black out from that, um, wake up the next day. I do remember that, but it, because it seemed so much like a dream, um, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't do the whole body response and, and crumble to the floor and start crying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, like fast forward from, Oh yeah. Fast forward to that afternoon i was doing landscaping work and it was really hot it was a summer i think it was july or august there and um it's the end of the day and i take my hat off and i'm totally sweating so i like take my hand and get all the sweat from my forehead and run it down the back of my neck there to get off all the sweat off and when my hand runs down the back of my neck um, I feel all this like crusty stuff back there. And so I'm like kind of picking it off and I look at it on my fingers and it looks like this, you know, dark red, brown, like crusty stuff. And I thought I, I thought I had like, I, I was like, is that blood? Like dried blood? And I thought I had cut myself initially. Right. Like I, I thought I had cut myself uh, during the landscaping. Sure. So I was like, oh, okay. Well, yeah. And so I kind of picked off the rest, and I went home, and uh, 
and said to my partner, like, hey, can you check out the back of my neck? I think I'm bleeding back there. And she sits me down. She's looking. She's like, she gasps. And she's like, oh, oh, you've got like a millimeter hole in the back of your neck. Huh. And like when she said that, that's when the, that's when the whole, like, that's when things like really set in as a reality of the last night and yeah, it started shaking and like, it's, I don't, I had soaked up, I have soaked up a lot of trauma from this, um, these two weeks that I'm still, that I'm still like trying to, trying to work through. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, just absolutely terrifying because, I didn't know what the heck was going on. I didn't really know anything about like abduction experiences or anything prior to this. And I thought, I thought like meeting aliens would be like a nuts and bolts affair, you know, prior to this, I thought, Oh yeah, it'd be like a craft you'd see, you know, at night or in the daytime and it would come down. And these beings would walk out of a doorway in the craft or whatever right like very 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 materialistic uh but this this was all this was all non-materialistic it was on this whole nother whole nother plane and level so i I didn't really know how to deal with it at all and the only way i could deal with it was like experience trauma because i felt like so powerless and and so much fear from from these experiences and and so after that did it did it continue yeah it did yeah and uh it was it was weird because it started showing up in uh well yeah i would say it started showing up in in physical reality uh the next next one was uh i was next one of that that i recall was that i was awoken I was sitting on my bed. I feel the vibrations. Um, I'm sitting there like I was in the leather chair. It's just um, obedient. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I can't move. I got my hands on my lap. Uh, and I'm just staring at the bedroom wall. Like, I just, that's what I'm doing. And this huge, uh, from the bedroom door, this huge fly or wasp comes in to view and hovers in front of me and then goes down to my right leg and is kind of like crawling around and I'm, (laughs) I'm powerless. I'm like looking down at it with my eyes. I'm like, Oh, don't you sting me. Don't you sting me. Don't you sting me. (laughs) Cause I'm, I'm also allergic to wasps and bees. Right. So Mm. I I have this ingrained fear of, uh, uh, you know, a healthy fear in the, in the, you know, physical reality of, of bees and wasps. Um, I, I but, wonder, yeah. I wonder if that's why that's what you saw. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. Whether, whether it was my creation or their creation or just like a, um, you know, uh, a bit of both. Um, but yeah, I was, I was terrified of this and, and it's, and I'm looking at it and, you know, if I could be sweating astral beads, I'd be sweating like crazy. <laughs> but, and I see this thing and I, at one point, it's just like, you can't do anything. Like, that's what I get from it. Like, you can't do anything. And it just like takes its stinger and almost like raises it and plunges it into my leg. And that I just like, like scream and black out. Wow. And, yeah, and then the, like the next day, that was one of the ones where yeah, it was obviously like the, did the whole crying thing. Did, did you uh, have did you have a mark or anything where the thing stung you? I I did not check to see oh. if I had a mark. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I I don't know why I didn't. Um, I did end up with some unexplainable scars after this whole thing. Uh, you know, the whole the whole had is is totally gone now um but it was there you know i I didn't even take a picture of it like why didn't i ask claire to take a picture of it right right i don't i don't i think i was just like overwhelmed with uh, these events so much and and it was taking up so much of my uh my mind and my emotional energy that uh like i did yeah these things just didn't even cross my mind 
to like document or like take pictures or check. Um, yeah. So, well, I, I think too, a lot of times when you're experiencing this stuff, you're trying to interpret it to yourself. You're not even considering trying to present it to anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I was trying to make sense of it myself. And the old, the only person I was like really talking with about it was my partner at the time. Right. And she, you know, she was incredibly supportive. Like, um, she would understand more than most people, you know, that we go through these things like weird people like us <laughs> tend to go through these <laughs> things every once in a while. So she was, she was okay. You know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there for you, whatever's happening, I'm there for you. And, but yeah, it, it started to kind of deteriorate our relationship in those two weeks. Like, you know, we were, both of us were not sleeping. Um, I was not sleeping at all, but the second week, Mm. And, and I was, I was making her not sleep because I, I was like cling, basically clinging to her the entire night. Right. Instead right. of like having, having our own separate spaces in bed, I would be like huddled up against her and like, don't let them take me, you know, kind of thing. Um, yeah. So it definitely started to, to, you know, uh, grind on the relationship that way. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, so the fly or whatever the hell that was, um, th like the day after that, the day after I had that, you know, dream or whatever it was where the fly, where it stung me, um, I'm working on the house. I'm doing renovations. So I'm in the bathroom and I think I'm reframing the, the bathroom window. And, uh, so I got the bathroom window open and standing on the toilet doing doing the reframing and the biggest freaking fly i've ever seen <laughs> ever seen inch and a half long i saw it i heard it before i saw it what Just was it was it a fly or was it a bee of some sorts it was like to me it looked like a like a horse fly but times you know times five like our so horse flies Horse flies, our horse flies out here aren't that big, right? Like, I don't know. We, we get them that big here. They, they can grow up to like an inch and a half, two inches. Yeah, yeah. I, we don't get those out here. Like, where, where are you, just so people know? Oh, uh, Vancouver Island in okay. uh, British, British Columbia, Canada. Yeah, and I did my, I did my research. I'm just uh, trying to find this fly that I saw. It was just massive. It was like inch and a half or, or larger. And this, so this thing hovers into view. It's about like maybe 10 inches from my face and just stares at me. Just like right there, eye to eye. And I'm <laughs> looking at my, I'm looking at his eyes and I scream like a little, <laughs> little girl. I'm, that's, you know, that sound doesn't come out of me. Right. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not afraid of insects. Like I have a, like I said, I have a healthy fear of like bees and or bees and wasps because I get stung. But this thing just, it frightened. I've never been that frightened before. Um, because it, it was the eyes, like these big black eyes sure. staring at me. And I launched myself off the toilet uh, as I screamed landed on the floor and like basically like backpedaled out the bedroom uh, bathroom door slammed it with my foot and and uh i basically um did the fetal position thing by my bed uh, mm. uh, by, uh at uh on uh on my partner's side there I waited for her to come home and she comes home and she, she, uh, she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, there, I'm like, there was a fly. There was a fly in the bathroom. She's like, she kind of rolls her eyes. And I'm like, no, no, no. Oh, God, you don't understand it. No. Uh, so, yeah, I think it was kind of beyond explanation at this point. The uh, You know, the few times I've seen flies that big, we used to, to walk through the woods, and occasionally they'd start circling around, and you could hear yeah. them. There'd yeah. be this loud buzz. The you're like, oh, yeah. what the hell? But like, when I think back on them, it doesn't even seem real. 
Like, yeah. and it's been so long since I've seen one like that. Like, it, I, I don't know. I get a weird feeling when I try to remember them. I'm like, that was real, right? Like, those flies were real. really that big. Yeah. I, like, I've never, I've seen a, tons of horse flies out here. Tons. Uh, never seen one that big before. And I even contacted the University of British Columbia, like the, the insect department, like the biology mm. department, say, asking them a question like, hey, have you ever seen this like, you know, fly out here before? Because it was just huge. And uh, I didn't get a response. So oh. and I tried to do it. I tried doing my Internet research. I'm like uh, looking for, you know, I, I still can't find anything online about flies that big out here. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, um, like the fly comes up much later too. It re-enters my life in 2015. Um, like we can get back, we can get to back to that later, or if you okay. want to do that now. No, let's let's, let's go. Let's go more chronologically, and then we'll come back. To yeah, the fly. yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. So um, there's that fly thing that just that just put the so much fear into me and. And then after that point, I was just, it was absolutely done. I was not sleeping at all. It was affecting my day to day. It was affecting my work. It was affecting my relationship. And I'm sick of these things. Um, I just wanted to stop. I just wanted to stop, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't even, I don't even know what their purpose is. I don't even know what their intent. Like, why, why are you here? What are you doing with me? I, I have no idea what you're doing with me. You're not, you're not telling me anything. You're just doing stuff to me. And, and I'm, I am not in the know apparently. <laughs> right. So, so I'm totally, you know, if, if there were little seeds of and crumbs of like information, like, Oh, well, we're doing this because, you know, we're trying to, you know, alter your psyche or, or boost your consciousness or something or like, okay, I'd be fine with that. But like, there was no communication whatsoever really along those lines. I was just not in the know. So, um, yeah, I, I was absolutely sick of it at this point. And I remember the one day or the one night I, I lay down in bed. I'm just like, I projected to them. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with you. Stop it. Stop it. Get out of my life. Get out mm -hmm. of my life. And that night, I don't know what time it is, but it was later, later in the morning, like, must have been two or three or whatever. Um, feel the vibrations. I'm like, and I, when I was in the vibratory state, I'm laying there and I can feel one of them in the kitchen. And by this point, point I am so goddamn angry that I just launched myself out of body and flew into the kitchen. And there's, there's one standing there. And this guy is like three feet ish um maybe a little shorter uh but he's and he kind of like presents himself like the nurse did in this humanish form mm -hmm. except he he looks like a little kid but like a, like a kind of like an adult kid which is weird um with this very <laughs> very serious look on his face you know huge head for his body yeah. um black parted hair dark parted hair huge dark eyes you know, like human looking eyes and the thin like lips and whatnot. And he's just standing there with his hands by his side. Oh, he's also dressed in a like suit, like a business suit, which is weird. And so I see him standing in the kitchen and I just fly up to him and I start pounding him on the head just as hard as I can. Boom, boom, boom. But it's like hitting a tank. Like I'm not making any I'm not making any dents at all. He's not, he's not even budging like a millimeter. Uh, even though I'm like just unleashing on this little dude. Um, and I'm getting the, I'm getting the sense from him. I'm getting the, the thoughts from him that what, you know, I'm saying like, stop it, stop it, get out of my life, get out of my life, get out of my life. And I'm getting the thoughts from him that like, well, you had the, you had the choice the whole time. Like you could have ended this at any point. 
Mm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, that was, and that was the end of, uh, of the two weeks there. Okay. Um, and I started getting, the, you know, started getting some good sleeps after that. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I was, I was successful in that department. You know, I told them to get out of my life, but, uh, yeah, they certainly got out of my life. You know, they've, they've checked in there, you know, from time to time here and there, but, uh, you know, since 2005, it's been pretty uneventful that way. Okay. All right. Where does the fly come back in? Okay. Oh, with the fly. Yeah. Um, so this was probably about 2015. This is this, I, I take this as one of the check-in points, like, Hey, we're still around, you know, um, so I was, uh, 2015, my, my sister, my little sister and, uh, my two nephews were down, um, from, from up province. And, uh, I decided to take them out to the river to do some fossil hunting and, uh, it's a gorgeous day, summer day. We're out fossil hunting. I got a couple rock, rock hammers for the boys. And so the boys that are kind of up river, it's this really shallow river, just, in the middle of the summer, it's just like a trickle in this in this fossil hunting part. Um, and the two boys are out there, you know, banging away on the rock hammers. My sister's in between us. And I'm just kind of tapping on rocks, seeing what I can find. Mm-hmm. And from the direction of the boys, like upriver, I hear this. And uh, I hear it stop behind me and I hear something fall to the ground. I was like, what? And I turn around and there's this two, two and a quarter inch fly thing. Like on its back, right behind me going uh, with its legs. And I'm like, whoa. And I didn't even, I didn't even remember. Like I didn't recall the previous fly thing at this point. I was just kind of like, whoa, holy cow. I got to show the boys this, right? So I like laid my rock hammer on it so that it would stay so i could call the boys over and the the shaft of the rock hammer was probably like well, i guess good three quarters of an inch um the steel part and i laid that on the body and this thing was sticking out like like half an inch on either side or 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 something like that like it was really like wriggling wriggling under the rock hammer so the boys are all excited they're like oh whoa yeah and my sister is like oh gross and uh yeah so they lost interest pretty pretty quick and i'm just kind of staring at it like what the hell i've never seen what is this and i lift up the rock hammer and it kind of like um gets back up on its feet and then flies away and off down river and uh i was i was kind of perplexed i was like what you know i've never seen a big fly that big before but i guess i'd kind of blocked out that memory like Hmm. for 10 years (laughs) and uh so i'm driving them home to to our mom's place and there's this really tight corner uh it's really like acute angle that you gotta like really slow down and to to get to my mom's so i i slow down i'm in a right hand drive vehicle too so my sister's on like the left side of me and she's talking away and as i'm turning around this like um uh this corner i'm doing it really really slowly too uh there's there's two cars there and the second second vehicle is like a like a toyota truck like extra cab and as i'm like like really just like almost idling past this vehicle because i'm still in the turn i notice the driver looking at me and I'm kind of like, I'm kind of looking over at Chantel, my sister, because she's talking. And I noticed this guy, he's got his hands on the steering wheel and he is locked eyes with me. Absolutely locked eyes with me. And it's almost like as I passed his head, like his body didn't even move. It's like his head was on like a, like a, just a swivel. And he just like, locked eyes with me and as i passed 
I got this like feeling of dread and I noticed that his eyes were completely black. It was like a normal looking dude. Okay. Yeah. I should say maybe, yeah. Okay. He's got plaid clothing, but he's normal looking dude, like older, <laughs> so, older, yeah, older gentleman, but like completely black eyes. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and flannelish. Well, yes. Flannelish. I'll throw that in there. Right. <laughs> um, not your typical flannel man experience, but, uh, yeah. I was, and like, we drove past him and I'm like gripping the steering wheel. I'm like, Holy crap, Chantel, did you see that guy? And she didn't, she didn't see him at all because she's looking at me. And, and she's like, what? I'm like that guy had completely black eyes. And I'm, I get this like super tense of sense of terror. And, uh, and I just kind of zone out. Like she's talking about something and I was like, totally zone out. Cause I'm just, like thinking about this dude and then it all starts coming back to me like oh my god the black eyes the fly the impossible fly the fly that from beforehand from 2005 like it's just it's, to me it's kind of one of those um yeah we're still here uh moments yeah yeah and it's interesting that it was flannelish yeah it is and like I, I had a lot of thought about that guy, you know, like it's not your typical like black eyed. No. Uh, um, uh, story like, like a black eyed kid or like, I don't often hear like tales of like black eyed men. Um, H had you considered stopping and going back? I didn't No, I didn't. <laughs> I don't know why. Again, I don't know why. Yeah. And I've had now, that experience. Nowadays, yeah. Sorry, what was that? Oh, I've had that experience where, like, I've seen something odd and I just keep going. And then yeah. I think, why didn't I stop and go back, you know? Totally. Yeah. And, I mean, you hear that a lot, right? In in so many encounters, like, oh, I don't know, it just kept going for some reason. Or, or we didn't talk about it for some reason. And, yeah, for, like, nowadays, nowadays I'm a lot more kind of in tune with these experiences and I'm a lot more confident. So I will confront them um, whenever I notice something. So, so I, I have been looking up horse flies. Yeah. And I'm finding that the biggest ones only get to be about an inch. Yeah. Uh, and they don't really describe what I used to see when we used to walk through the woods. And it specifically says they don't tend to go into the woods. Oh, okay. Yeah, because so they're more around, more around like water areas, eh? Uh, yeah, and livestock. Um, right, right. But it says they don't like the dark, so they tend to stay away. away uh, let's see, lagoons and ponds. Uh, they don't like darkness, so they're rarely seen in forests and woodlands. And that's okay. always where we saw them, which is now making that, that sort of was that real thing kind of a little oh, weirder, honestly. Interesting. Interesting. Wow. I'm okay. going to have to do some deeper research onto this. And the ones that they're showing that are like the biggest horse flies are not what we saw. We saw what looked like a normal fly, but they yeah. were almost like two inches long. Okay. I remember one was on my friend's back after we had walked through the woods and, and we had stopped to see if a friend was home and he wasn't. And we start to walk away and I see this thing on his back and I'm like, hey, Dave, there's a horse fly on your back. And he's like, <laughs> what? And he reaches back and he grabs it. Like, he just reached back blindly and grabbed it. The thing was almost the size of his palm. Whoa. And it just let out this loud buzz, and he screamed, and the thing flew off, you know? And I was like, okay. Yeah. And he's, he's like, you couldn't have done something? I'm like, what did you want me to do? Yeah, grab a stick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, near, the nearest broom, maybe? Yeah, kneel down. I'll kick you in the back of the shoulder really hard. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so how old were you? Oh, probably probably nineteen twenty somewhere in there. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's not like uh, it's not like you're a kid, and no. and things seem larger because you're a kid, right? Like you're, exactly. You're you're an adult at this point. And like I oh. said, we'd walk we'd walk through the woods, and these things would just you know swing around us on a fairly regular basis. But I haven't seen one since back then. Yeah, okay. I don't spend as much Wait. time in the woods either, which is what I assumed was the explanation for that. But now now I'm starting to wonder. Well, you were you having weird experiences back then? 
Yeah, I've always had weird experiences. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, and right. and I don't, I don't know what was happening right at that time because it was probably before I was keeping records. But and it's right. not something. I, and I wouldn't have noted down. Oh, saw a big you know horse fly today type of thing. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Because he, he didn't think you, it was you weird. You just thought it was kind of ordinary, right? Yeah. And he was just yeah. like, "Ah, oh, damn horse flies!" And I'm like, "Oh, this is a thing! Holy crap!" Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally. Like, like uh, that thing's um, a monster. That's weird. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do more research on that. Interesting. Yeah, I've I, you know I've done I've kind of laid out this uh, this part of my life in a couple of interviews so far, and it's neat because every time I I do an interview and talk with someone. I get these little, little bursts of of uh, uh, of knowledge or or awareness in, into into my experience. Like, yeah, that's so interesting that you've kind of had a similar experience with a fly that big. Yeah, I just didn't recognize. Like I said, I never recognized it as anything paranormal in any way. Right, it's, right. But like, like when I think back, and like when I think back, even on him reaching toward that, I think was that real? Did that really happen? Because I yeah. never see those flies now. Yeah, and well, we used to have I, horses. We used to have a uh, neighbor had horses right across the street, and I never saw them. Huh. Okay. Well, see, if I didn't, if I didn't have that dream the night before about that massive fly, I would have written that fly off. You know, I saw right. it in the window. I would have. It would have been like, wow, that's a big fly. I wouldn't have been like af- that afraid of it. But it had then, that sort of synchronistic effect on you. It totally did, yeah. And then, and then the next fly experience with the black-eyed, you know, like prior to the black-eyed guy, I, I had written it off. It was just like, oh, this is a normal, natural creature, la la la. It's a, uh, it's kind of anomalous, but wow, look, it's so big. But I, you know, had I not seen the 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 black eyed person after that, it would it would have just been logged as a as a oh yeah, that was just a big fly. Yeah. Right. So yeah. so here's 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 my question for listeners: Has anyone else out there seen horse flies that big? Um, and do you know? And it, does anyone know if that's a normal thing? Like maybe maybe I'm just not finding it on the web from a pre- preliminary search. Um, but you know, it's saying they're giving sizes of around an inch and these things were way big, bigger than an inch. I would say closer yeah. to two inches. At least they were like, like I said, my, it, when my friend reached and grabbed it, it was like in his palm. It wasn't yeah. like a small thing. Yeah. Oh, weird. Okay. So huh. if anyone, if anyone huh. out there knows, knows something about this or has had weird experiences that involve horse flies, uh, you know, drop me a line. I'm totally curious about that. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So outside of that, have you had other weird experiences? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've had like shadow entities. Mm. Um, uh, I've had weird time related experiences. Um, Ooh, like what? Ah, uh, <laughs> I'm almost reluctant to get into this. Like, <laughs> well, you don't, you don't just, have to if it, you don't want to. No, I, it just it just seems. Like one of those, one of those things where I, I looked at it, I'm like, dude, that sounds, that sounds absolutely crazy. Like, like when I related it to myself, when I wrote it down uh, and looked at it, I was like, that's nuts. And when it, when it actually like happened and dawned on me, I, I was, I didn't believe it at first. I totally did not. Um, okay, well, I'll just get into it then. Um, (laughs) so yeah okay well i've had weird um you know bigfootish like experiences witch experiences um alien experiences shadow entity experiences what what, what, what do you mean what do you mean witch experiences oh um oh well that was the uh the whole hope experience uh you read it out on one of your shows initially um where my friend colin got chased through the woods Hmm, I don't remember nope. offhand. Uh, yeah, it was a big long listener story at first, um, but it ended up uh, ended up continuing, um, and and we ended up seeing this this witch person that this witch lady that uh, that um, uh, initially sent us out to the to the site where all this all this anomalous stuff happened. Huh. Okay. 
Well, let, let, let's go into the time one for now. Yeah, that that one's a hell of a long story too. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we did a we did an interview with Tim um, back when it happened. Uh, oh, Tim I, Tim Ren- Renner on Strange yeah, Familiars. Yeah, yeah, Strange okay. Familiars. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's episode sixty three and sixty four. If you want to oh, okay. l- okay. listen to it, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, like I was saying, I've had a lot of experiences with like aliens and this and that and the other, but I've never. I've never really had any ghost experiences like apparitions or anything. Um, so I think this was 2016 when I was, uh, working, uh, at a laser tag center. Um, I was a contract artist and we were repainting the entire laser tag center. And so I was working with a couple of other artists and we do long days and, and to while away the hours we would put on, uh, Jennifer would put on, uh, coast to coast. And so she had a bunch of downloaded episodes of coast to coast and it was a Halloween, Halloween time. So we were listening to like ghost stories and whatnot. So we're on our break in the back, um, just outside the complex. And I, I was like, Hey, you guys ever had any ghost experiences? And, and, uh, Jackson was like, no, no, not really. Jennifer was like, ah, no, not really that I can think of. And then they shot the question back to me. Well, what about you, Alex? I was like, Oh, Oh, um, uh, and the only thing I could really remember was this time. Um, I was about 12, 11 or 12 years old. And I had just gone to bed and put myself under the covers, clicked off the light. And from the foot of my bed, I hear a man's voice say, you're going to be okay now. Hmm. And like, it was so clear and so right there. I was like, as an 11, 12 year old boy, I was like, whoa, whoa. Like there's a guy <laughs> in my room. There's a guy right. in my room. And I just got in here. Why is there a guy in my room? So I'm like kind of hiding under the covers half like, and it took me a while to like reach over to, to my light and switch it on. And so, you know, I, I kind of like use this like 12 year old bravado and okay. All right. Switch on the light and peek out <laughs> of the covers. So, okay. There's no one there and look under the bed. Oh, there's no one there. So I, I go around my room and there's no one there. What the heck? But clearly, clearly, this man said, you're going to be okay now. And at Mm -hmm. the time, I I was like, okay, well, if this was projected at me, like, you know, I've actually got a pretty good life. Why am I going to be okay now? Like, you know, it's, I don't have anything harsh going on. Right. You know, uh, medically, I was fine. Uh, You know, like home life was pretty good. Uh, everything, school, friends, etc. Like, <laughs> I was, I was uh, it was a really good childhood. Uh, so then I was kind of stuck in my mind and perplexed me. Um, yeah. So when I said that to her, to her and Jackson back at the Laser Quest complex, I was like, okay, yeah, you know, there was this one experience where I was in bed and this man's voice said. You know, from the foot of the bed, it said, you're going to be okay now. And as soon as I said that, <laughs> I, I gasped. I, I literally gasped. I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And Jennifer's like, what, what, what? I'm like, holy crap. That was my voice from now. <laughs> Okay, oh, that's really interesting. I've got shiver- I've actually got goosebumps like right now. <laughs> I was like, and, she, and Jennifer is like, "Oh my god, get out!" She like pushes me on the shoulder. "Oh my god, you're gonna time travel? When are you gonna do this?" I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, no! What are you talking about time travel? Like, I don't know what the hell." And I was totally like, "And but yeah, like when I when I voiced it, like it was my voice from back, back then." Uh, as an adult, <laughs> it's just like blown away. And I tried to like, you know, I tried to like, um, okay, no, no, it couldn't have been my voice, you know, but I, like I would record it. 
on a recorder, my phone. I was like, listen to it. I'm like, yeah, that's that's what I heard. Um, hmm. so, so you, you created you created your own little time loop there. It, well, yeah, I, yeah, we yeah we can get into the time loop thing because uh, later on I actually discovered when I did it, and it was a couple years prior to 2016 when I actually intended to go back to my younger self and just project love and kindness and and mm. see if see if see if doing that could change the present I don't know I was in a I was in a dark place back then you know it was 2014 I wasn't doing so good um uh, work was not so good. Relationships were not so good. I was not in a good place. And, and I started thinking, you know, Hey, yeah, it's like, if, if I can, if I, you know, if I can, what about this ripple effect? What about this butterfly effect? You know, if I can send love back to my, back to my former self, you know, as a youngster, maybe that'll just like, you know, if I can reach my younger self, Maybe that'll just like spark a little, a little, uh, a little butterfly effect that'll like change my present or something. But that was, I didn't, I didn't actually remember doing this until like, so a month after I initially found out and initially thought that was my voice when I said, when we were talking about the ghost experiences, like a month later, I'm listening to, oh, listening to a interview with um, uh, Robert Moss. He's a dream practitioner. I think he's from Australia. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's going on uh, in this interview and all of a sudden he starts talking about the, Oh yes, there was this one time when, uh, when, uh, you know, when I was a little boy and, and, uh, you know, I'd have these odd experiences and I was always in the hospital because I was a very sickly child and, and, uh, this, you know, this uh, very kindly old man always came to see me when I was in the hospital. I didn't have too many people to visit and, and he would always sit down on my bed and he yeah, was a round pink faced man with a wild shock of white hair and he would sit down and he says, Robert, it's going to be okay now. It's going to be, everything's going to be fine. You're going to go on to, you know, write lots of books, you know, love lots of ladies, et cetera, et cetera. And, and then he, he says, oh yeah, like years later, I found out that I was a, that guy, you know, with the round pink face and the wild shock of white hair. And as soon as he said that in that interview, I did that gas thing again. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, I've actually, I'm not going to do this. I've already done it. I did it two years ago. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. So there it is. I'm not seeing it's time travel for, no, not at all. But I just, that's, I, the, I don't, I have I don't to think just, it's. I don't think it needs to be time travel. I think that it. I don't. I think time doesn't work in a linear way like we expect it to. Well, yeah, um, yeah. So I mean, you you doing that in the present then was the first thing that happened, not not the second thing that happened, and then you experiencing the past was the second thing that happened. Experiencing the past was the second thing that happened. Yeah, yeah. Whereas it, initially it feels like that was the first thing that happened where's this right. guy's voice at the foot of my bed that said you're going to be okay now but that's like the second thing that happens and and i think it's that our, i think a lot right. of this you know I, I i go back and forth on the whole concept of free will or whether we live in some kind of a block universe that everything has already happened in but you could also have multiple universes yeah. where everything's already happened in too so it's like, I think our brains have to organize everything in a sequential manner, and occasionally they get kind of short-circuited out of that. Okay. Or, you know, it's a glitch in yeah. the matrix. Right, right, glitch in the matrix, yeah, yeah. And I, I was kind of having this discussion of uh, with, uh, with my girlfriend a couple of days ago um, about deja vu. And maybe, mm -hmm. maybe deja vu is just like that, uh, just a little glitch where, where we experience nonlinear time, just a fraction, just a little glimpse of nonlinear time, just, just for, just for a few seconds. You know? Right. 
yeah and that's why it feels so weird and like like oh i've been here before i've i've experienced this before or something like that but but we're just being like just taken out of our our um our conception conceptions or preconceptions of uh, and our habit of linear time and in that deja vu moment we're just like experiencing the now time the 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 all present time you know yeah yeah i don't know it was just something we were playing with it was a really cool discussion too so yeah and and, and, and what what are your experiences but, uh, with shed oh go ahead oh yeah no uh yeah i'm cool with that that's um shadow beings uh most of them are dicks <laughs> they're, they're i yeah they're they're complete dicks they're just i've experienced like pretty low level shadow entities uh they just seem like hungry a-holes just looking for fear or something um yeah the first time i encountered one it it was well i guess you could Related to the old hag syndrome, where it's like pressing down on your chest and like which, really which is, hard to breathe and whatnot. Which is also connected to sleep paralysis. Which is, yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. And um, yeah, that was that was the first one. And when I when I knew what was happening, when I clued into like, oh, it's one of you. Okay, I haven't encountered one of you before okay how do i get rid of you i'm not particularly fond of this situation right now so <laughs> okay well i'll just blast light at you you know see if that works mm -hmm. and that didn't work that just like fizzled fizzled out <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay oh let's do something else oh what can i do what can i do this thing's like just pressing down on me with this like force and this terror and like ah, and and I was like, oh, okay, just calm down. So because I was like totally like getting fear, fearful from this like interaction, I was like, oh, right, just calm down. So I totally calmed down as much as I could. And then I slowly like turned my head because I was still kind of like, Ugh, you know, I, I still, I slowly turned my head, looked it straight in the face, whatever face it had and said, dude, you're complete. You're being a complete dick right now. F off. <laughs> and then it just kind of went away. Huh. Yes, you can tell these things to F off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure the intent is is what matters. Or at yeah, least I think yeah, it would be. Yeah, in, intent and belief. Um, but yeah, I find it. I found it really important just to calm down um, and not not uh, feed it that feed it what it wanted there yeah. i mean to me it wanted like fear emotion i know that's a a lot of other people report that but yeah how, how much of this stuff do you feel like is coming from you on some level coming from me like absolutely coming from me like, like coming non, com like like not an external experience like not an external or or you're putting the face on it yeah interesting i i would say um that's a hard one yeah oh well, it's I'm very like, hard i'm one. rolling through the i'm rolling through the rolodex of my experiences and <laughs> yeah the the nurse and the nurse and the little boy there in the in the alien experience the gray experiences yeah i i, I can i feel that i put those masks on them those kind of costumes um in order like you know subconsciously to 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 not experience the full the full thing there you know the full full monty yeah um so i i kind of characterized them um especially with the nurse because that makes sense because i was a big looney tunes fan uh well still am uh, and that's that's very iconic, iconic. The nurse uniform in Looney Tunes. So yeah, I can see how my mind brought that to the to the experience as as uh, almost a safety mechanism there. Um, the shadow beings. Um, I don't think I, I put any projection on. Um, they just 
they just look like shadows. Yeah. Hmm. Did did you have those when yeah. you were con- yeah, it's like, weird. I, did you have those when you were like consciously awake? Uh yeah, a couple of times. A couple okay. of times. Uh two of them two of them have been in like sort of a almost sleep paralysis kind of esque um state. But uh the other two were, were like right there. Um it was uh it was actually me and Colin, uh my friend um uh, who did the Strange Familiars interview with me, um, about the hope experience. It was probably like I think it was about two months after uh the last witch sighting. And we're sitting around the campfire. Uh he used to he used to live at my place, a uh, trailer on the property there. He, he rented a spot on the property with his trailer and, and we're sitting around the campfire and he, I mean, I, we're just like staring at the campfire. Right. And then I notice him kind of glance up. So I look at him to see what he's looking at and right against the side of the house, like 15 feet away, there's this eight foot tall shadow, like striding by like, like, a figure you know with arms and legs Mm. and a head and it's striding by on the side of the house or just you know in front of the side of the house and and as it got to the corner when it passed the corner it just disappeared like you can still see it on the house but like as it passed the corner it disappeared but the weird thing is it went in front of a window like you can see the shadow in front of a lit window so we're, it's dark out, you know, it's not dark outside, but it's like, it was dusk at the time. And you can see this thing, like, go in front of a lit window. And and I was like, Colin, what did you just see there? He's like, oh, it, uh, it was just a, you know, shadow from one of the passing cars there, with the lights. I'm like, yeah, okay, well, sh- you know, cars do make shadows on the wall here, but they don't create shadows on lit windows. He's like, oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Uh, sh- <laughs> so, yeah. Huh. So do, do you think all of so this I stuff is... I don't know if something follow, followed us home from that experience, but I, I suspect it did. Do, do you think all of this stuff is somehow connected, or do you think it's maybe just connected because you are uh, like have a heightened awareness to it? Well, I find a lot of connections between them, which is weird. Um, like if I brought out the string and the, and the, and the, uh, and the, uh, the thumbtacks and, and just laid it all out on a big wall, um, I'm sure I could find like more connections that I'm aware of, but I, yeah, I mean, I think the, the most important connection, the underlying connection is, is us like I, you know, um, it was almost like we were invited to experience that the the whole hope experience by the river, and and it was as if I invited these alien greys into my life, and these subsequent shadow beings, and yeah. So I think having a heightened sense of awareness. Um, is almost a, like a bit of a, well, yeah, I guess a bit of an invitation for this to, stuff to come in. But uh, obviously, the more you look about, look at it, and the more you think think about it, the uh, <laughs> the more it tends to show up. And I can't stop. Th- I can't not think about this. I can't like delete this out of my life and just say, oh, okay, no. well, I'm shoving all this weird weird crap to the side, right? And uh, you know, I'm not one of those people. What do you what do you make of it? Like, do you think it's helped you overall? Made your life more interesting? Done anything positive for you? Well, obviously, it's made my life more interesting. Like, oh my god, I've had such like fascinating, fascinating experiences. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it's like totally helped me. Um, yeah, even even the traumatic events, like the the two thousand five experiences, I don't look at that as as a as a negative um, experience, um, I view or like something that's not beneficial to my life. 
that takes away stuff from my life. I view it as something that um, <clears throat> benefited myself and allowed me to expand my awareness and expand my consciousness and and my just widen my view on reality. And I think that's that's probably the main ta- main takeaway for me is uh, is is a widened perception and a widened view of reality, and and uh, uh, a bolstered curiosity. Let's say it just okay. it's like the more the more experience the more experiences I have, the more I want to get into it. Right, the more I want to <laughs> like discover and explore about this weird weird reality that we're in all right um do you want to retell the witch story maybe as a patreon segment yeah i, I can totally do that like the okay. the whole hope experience and the, and the witch for sure well well thank you thank you for spending this time talking with me alex these are this is a really interesting uh these are really interesting experiences and the horsefly thing now really has me thinking Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to get back on Google now and see if I can find this damn fly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and, like, hey, thank you for having me on, man. Like, uh, yeah, like I said, the more I talk about these experiences, uh, the more connections I, I start to make. And, and uh, um, you know, there's these little little bits of understanding that kind of pop up here and there. So uh, it's yeah. good. Yeah. And, and glad hopefully to, it'll- glad to chat with you. Hopefully it'll click with someone out there too, and it'll make let them make more sense out of their experiences. Oh hell yeah, yeah! If you get a, if you get uh, and if you get any uh, any people uh, getting back to you about the fly thing, let me know. Eh? Absolutely. So Alex, we had talked about a week ago, and uh, you contacted me after <clears throat> we talked to tell me you left off kind of the the, the whole big thing that the, your story was leading up to. Uh, you're referring to the, uh, almost precognition with the, uh, the massage, um, 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 the massage, uh, place. Is that correct? I, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, when, when I had the, the nurse take me into the, the massage, uh, place for my quote unquote haircut. Um, I, I saw it extremely vividly. It, w- it was like a dream. I was in dream awareness. So I was just following along, being a good soldier, doing what she asked, but still at the end, like kind of questioning it, you know, Oh, this is a weird haircut. And then it blanked out. And, and after, after she clamped that thing on the back of my head, um, so yeah, I got a very good visual of, of the entire, you know, haircut place, massage place. And, um, about a month after that whole experience, uh, I got a new job, uh, brand new job. And like the first day I was in a really bad car accident, boom, oh. um, g- got rear ended by a tree trimming truck with a full trailer at like 60 kilometers an hour uh super harsh both of us were fine um but we did have like some neck issues from the whiplash so i ended up getting some um through through the insurance i got i got some uh you know um therapy Mm -hmm. so i chose to do some chiropractic and uh some massage therapy i'd never actually gone to a massage therapist before so i thought that was you know the opportune time since it was getting paid for so i look in the phone book this is back in the days you know right actual right. Phys- phys- physical phone book and running through the uh through the yellow pages there and find uh i just scrolled my finger down and just like my, my finger landed on harbor view massage which was in comox um, just across the estuary from us at the time. And, uh, so went for my appointment and open up those double doors and everything in that office, that massage office was exactly the same as I had seen it when the quote unquote nurse took me in for my haircut, uh, that night. And that, 
blew my mind. Like as soon as I walked in there, just this whole flood of like, whoa, 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 what? You know, there's the there's the stone desk and the stone pillar behind it. There's the picture window with uh, with the uh, with the glacier and the estuary and the two rooms right beside. And when the when the masseuse comes out. Uh, she introduces herself and points to both of the rooms. She's like, okay, well, which room did you want? And I immediately pointed to the second room. I was like, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, don't, don't take me in there. Um, yeah. It, total head scratcher at the time. I, you know, I've had, I've had, I guess, precog, precognitive things in the past. Um, but nothing that explosive to my mind, like where I see everything, um, the same and, and really like as, as soon as I walked in there, like the whole experience came back to me and it wasn't a very good massage. Like I ended up going into the first room. No, you know, no, nothing, nothing against Harbor View Massage. Uh, they're great. But, um, I, I was so tense the entire time because I was in that space and, and not relaxing and, and thinking of the whole, ex- thinking back to the whole experience right. and, and, and then the whole showing up the bleeding hole in the back of my neck the next day. So yeah, it wasn't, uh, it didn't actually go back there. Um, you know, I kind of, I was back before I had a camera on my cell phone. So, uh, didn't end up taking any pictures or anything like that. So, so, but so- it, I'm, yeah, it's still there. So as weird as that is, I wonder if, I mean, the the, the obviously the accident would have been something that stood out to you. Oh so, yeah, yeah. I mean, what 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 if like you going to that massage place was like the the like a future memory that they used when they interacted with you? Right, right. Yeah, like let's 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 just scan in the future here. Okay, yeah. Here's an appropriate place that we can you know, invite him into and, and do this whole haircut business, uh, whatever that turned out to be. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I'd like, maybe, maybe it wasn't me like, you know, precog, precognizing, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that place in the future, but them like, you know, just plucking that little future memory out and inserting it into my past. And, uh, yeah. So what? Yeah. (laughs) Just a little camouflage. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, just like the nurse uniform, right? Just a little camouflage. Okay. We need a little camouflaged environment here for him to feel comfortable while we do whatever the heck we do to him (laughs) with this whole clamp business on the back of the neck. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, you know, I still, <laughs> I still go back to it and and wonder about it. Well, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, uh, I mean, yeah, it uh, certainly spices up life when you have these moments, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you told me you were a part of Strange Brew Radio. Uh, Strange Brow Radio. Strange Brow. B-R- yes. Yeah. B R A U. Uh, yeah, Strange Brow Radio. Um, I've been in contact with Tobe Johnson uh, of Strange Brow uh, since last year. He actually uh, contacted me first because he saw my Sasquatch sculpture online. I did a huge uh, driftwood Sasquatch sculpture on uh, Quadra Island. Oh. And uh, yeah, so I had been listening to his podcast. And he just messages me out of the blue and say, hey, is this yours? So yeah, we... You know, we found a lot of common ground with our experiences, and uh, and ended up being uh, really, really good friends. And you know, uh, I think it was last December he invited me to co-host uh, Strange Brown Radio once a month. So I've been having a hell of a good time doing that. Um, we do uh, we do a monthly segment called Ales and Tales, where we do really bad beer reviews and uh, talk mm-hmm. paranormal. Yeah. Huh. And and I just yeah. looked I just looked at your uh, Facebook page to see that really awesome statue. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's one uh, definitely one of my favorite ones I've I've made so far. I've been doing driftwood art for the past four years, 
Yeah, that, and, uh, that is impressive. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, it uh, it's it's certainly a certainly a fan favorite here on Quadra Quadra Island. I'd like to take a moment here to thank all of my Patreons, especially in this tough time. Your donations mean a lot. Uh, you are literally keeping this show going. So thank you so much, and an extra special thanks to those pledging $10 or more. Super Inframan, Allison Cook, Lindsay Trebet, Tim, Craig Parmenter, Walker, Joanna Rojas, Maddie, David Moore, Vincent Trewell, The Great Change, Stone Wilderness, Luke Osborne, Becky Trainer, Chris Barr, Rob Drummond, Alex Whitcomb, Demian Talman, Edu Camahort, Tactical Therapist, Janet Bunderson, 36 Dingo, Maria, Sam Sharon, Jennifer Campbell, American Rambler, Kevin, Barbara Fisher, John Rutledge Foster, Eric Citron, Andy McNamara, Sasha Yorg, Matthias Sunby, Dominic O'Malley, Christopher Vaughn, Riker and Stark, J. Otto Bullet, Jose A., Roger Gonzalez, Craig Cicernos, Ray Benedetto, Linz Jackson K., Alfred Tuttle, Matthew Sproul, Kevin Shrek, Patricia Gaiaquinta, William Lovelace, Mark Brady, Chris 646, Carla Mahoney, and James Lattimore. Thank you all so, so very much. You have been listening to Where Did the Road Go? This show is made possible in part from our Patreons, and we thank you and everyone listening for helping us continue this exploration of the strange. You can always find everything Where Did the Road Go related at www.wheredidtheroadgo.com. And thank you so much for your support.